Kahi, Habib. Oh my God, I get, I love getting called Habib. <laughs> what a pleasure to be on the show. I've always wanted a fireplace. That was my one demand. Thank you so much, Susie. I'm one, happy one we demand. could accommodate. Thank you. I, I, it's fake, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not real. It looks good. Speaking of Habibs, here come the Habibs. We're a hit sensation on Channel 9. That script is actually really cleverly written. I want to know the inspiration behind how that script came together. Good question. Here come the Habibs. That show came off the back of some stage shows we did. It was only like two pages. That idea sat on my laptop for 10 years. 10 years? 10 years it sat on my laptop. Eventually I went to Rob, you know, my good mate, and I said, Rob, we should do something about this. Because <laughs> I, I remember sending the idea uh, to him. And Rob's not impressed easily. He goes, yeah. I go, what do you mean, yeah, Rob? It's a brilliant idea. Come on. <laughs> and it was a simple idea. And uh, that was the beauty of it. I think if we pitch it earlier, I don't think the network's ready for it. The show went really, really well. Um, I did get in trouble because I said it was a, I said it was a vanilla milkshake writing team. <laughs> okay. I, I think in, I know what that implies. I got in trouble for that. <laughs> yes. But that was true. I said, well, if you're going to make this sort of ethnic show, shouldn't you have some, I mean, Rob and I were there part of the, um, writing team, like, you know, but we didn't actually write the scripts. I wanted, I wanted to write an episode, but, you know, wasn't allowed. And we had some great ideas and, and we, Rob and I wanted to push it further. Jet skis and swim pools, Lebanese people don't do that. <laughs> I said, but it's a comedy. You know, we're not saying it's like, you know, what do you, what do you want us to do? They go, they go to work and come back. Well, you pitch that idea. They, they've got to do crazy stuff. Yeah, it's a bit more so, interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Particularly when the characters are quite eccentric. Yeah. Yeah. And what people don't realise, right, Here Come the Hubbies is more about the white family next door rather than Lebanese family. Someone coming to their suburb and how it affects them. Because the Lebanese family, they've they just been themselves, right? But they're affecting the neighbours and they go, oh, look at these people, they're, they're ruining our neighbourhood. And at that time as well, 2016, mm. it, it was a a thing of, you know, to say the wogs and That's right. obviously coming off the back of uh, Wog Boy and Acropolis yep. Now and that kind of era. No, it is really cleverly written. And on that, you also did something street smart, I think, with Rob. Street smart was a lot of fun. It was about dumb criminals, but it was a family show about dumb criminals. Look, it was a fun show. The people that did see it loved it, but we didn't get a season two. Would you bring back Here Come the Habibs or Street Smart? I would love to bring those shows back and I think there's still legs in them, but I, I work on different stuff. Like I just keep, I move on. You know, some people don't work on, they like to just concentrate on one project. Yeah. Not, that's not me. That's not me. I like just different stuff. Hands in the different pies. Yeah, as long as I can stand up though. <laughs> that's the main thing. That's my main passion. People got to understand. I enjoy acting. It's not my passion. Stand up comedy is my passion. Well, you're no stranger to the screens, and I know that you were a guest on or a contestant on um, Australia's Got Talent. <laughs> yeah, we all watch that, Tahi. <laughs> Was it, um, was it the best, worst magician, the worst, best? World's best, worst magician. It's a character I created and I created for this at the festival. So I do comedy festivals. What am I doing during the day? And I've been collecting magic for a while. So I created this sort of comedy show. It went really well. Like it sold out, parents came, kids, and it just started taking off. Then they said, would you mind doing that show? I said, no. They said, come on, just do it. I said, I'll do it, but don't mention my name. Right? I said, don't mention Tay. So I come on the show. I remember Shane Jacobs been saying, one of the judges saying, Tay. I said, no, the world's best, worst magician. And it went really well. Got a standing ovation. Yes, yes, yes. But of course, you know, I can't win. Would you do magic again? Absolutely. I went to Brisbane Comedy Festival recently. I do my adult show. I did my children's magic show and it sold out. It was crazy. I, it's just a lot of work. That's the only problem. Oh, is that why? You didn't want to pursue it, just the work? Well, I'm, I'm do, I do it, but only when I feel like it or the preparation involved. Yeah. It takes me like one hour to set up. I've got to be there early and I'm going to do, then I've got to do the show. But isn't that better than learning lines for hours and hours and hours? No, well, stand up, I just turn up. I don't have to turn up when the show starts. Yeah. If I'm like the last act, I just turn up at the end if I have to. But the magic, I've got to pack it up at the end as well. Like, it kills me and it kills me doing that much work. Now, Rob said something really interesting. He said that you took him under your wing and Rob learned a lot from you. Now, I want to know from you, what were your impressions when you first saw Rob on stage when the audience laughed for the first time? What was his reaction? He's never done a stage show before in his life. No, oh, right. So I go, come on. He came on and, his, and my other mate, George, you know. So they're on stage. Yeah. And Enmore Theatre sold out, packed. Yeah. And these guys are on stage. The curtains come up. 
we start our scene and they do some lines and the crowd just roars with laughter. And I remember it just hit, it hit them like a slap on the face. I clearly remember standing there watching them, watching, I could see their faces going, they, they sort of went back a wall. And then Rob looks over to me, I look at him, I go, come on, do your next line. <laughs> Stop standing there. <laughs> like, it, was, it was like someone just slapped him on the face, you know? And um, it was a great experience and we had a great time. And, and since then, he's, Rob's great because he, he's, he's taught himself, which is beautiful. Like self. Has he really? Yeah, it's just like, the, you know, we don't, I mean, I've done a few acting courses, different stuff, but like, yeah. you know, I remember telling Rob, you're doing stand-up. He goes, no, you're doing, going to do stand-up. He goes, no. And we, we, we forced him kicking and screaming and now he loves it. Ad-libbing must be quite hard to do though, because you mentioned you just ad-lib a, a lot of the time yeah. on stage. I think a lot of performers get scared of ad-libbing because they're not sure where to go. Whereas I don't get scared because it doesn't matter if it goes nowhere, just move on. I can always make something funny, I believe. I'm not worried about if it falls flat. I don't make fun of the audience. I genuinely want to know about people. I want to include them in my show. I find that's much better shown. And the audience loves that because they're seeing something that's happening on the spot, live, and it won't happen again. And they react differently to that. Where do you get your material from, or your inspiration for your material, for all your stand-up comedy work on stage? Humans will never, ever stop being stupid. <laughs> never, you know what I mean? So there's always going to be human behaviour. And I like my shows to be different. If you've been in the game long enough, when you try a, a joke that's new, a gag and it works, it's still a magnificent feeling. Do you ever think you're going to run out of content? No, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think of that because I just, we've done like about 15 stage shows over the years. We've done several movies, sitcoms. My stand-up stuff is different. There's still much more to do, I find. Like, no, no, never. What is it like to be on stage? Is there like an adrenaline rush? Is it an energy that bounces between you and the audience? Like, describe that feeling for me. When I first started comedy, it was obviously, you get nervous. I don't get nervous these days. I get more excited and uh, anxious only if the setting's weird. Different environments I perform in give, give me a bit of anxiety, like a dance floor. Comedians hate dance floors. Oh, right. That's our enemy. Why? Because you're on a stage, there's a dance floor, then there's an audience. There's a huge gap. We call it the gap of where the jokes can die. <laughs> okay. They can just fall in there. Like void. <laughs> there's a void, there's, yeah, it's a void of, uh, it, it's just intimacy, it just doesn't work like that for us. Um, but Going on stage, when a show works and when you get a connection with the audience, I believe there's not a better feeling. That's why I love stand-up comedy, always will. My passion, as long as I can do stand-up comedy, I'm happy. All right, so this is sounding more like a hobby. What do you actually do for work? <laughs> what I do for work? Yeah, like if, no, if you're nothing. not Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I do 40 minutes on stage, I need the rest of the week off. Yeah. I've got to relax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to recover from that. <laughs> now, I used to be a school teacher. I was an English drama teacher and I left to run some, a business with my brother. I'm a silent partner in my brother's cafes. Um, but other than that, I just do this full time, which I love. But people think like, because of the shows I've done, they think this guy must be in the cars and like burnouts and they go, oh my God, look, you have big, look at my car, come here, look at it. All right. I go, look at it, I spent 50 grand on it. Good for you. Like, I don't understand cars. Like, I, don't, I don't mind. Like, I get your passion, but it's, it's, people just pigeonhole me. That's, that's the thing. Like, I look at his, they've seen me on Fat Pizza, How's As, and but the people who know me know I'm, yeah, I'm very different to that. So what's ahead for Tahir? What can we expect? I want to do some more movies. I want to do a children's movie, funny enough, like, yeah. I've just pitched a drama. I can be a serious actor as well. I'm not saying I'm Robert De Niro, but I'm saying you look at Robert De Niro and he did all serious roles. And then he did a comedy and he was scared of doing a comedy and analyze this and analyze that, those movies. And Billy Crystal said, no, you'll be right. Because Billy Crystal was a comedian, but he was brilliant in it. If you're an actor, you can, you can do different stuff, but it's just how people perceive you. I want to write my book, which I'm working on. What's uh, your story about? Well, how I came from Turkey, migrated to Australia and became a live stand-up comedian, which is... So your, bi your biography. Yeah, my biography, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. I'm, I'm actually doing... I'm actually going to call it the proper way to immigrate. <laughs> right? So I'm actually doing that show right now. I'm on tour with that. Okay, that's a great title. Yeah. The proper way to immigrate, which it's is what? Good title, Come yeah. to a country, love the country just as much as the one you've left, and 
embrace it for, for all its, you know, people its beauty. But that's the proper way to immigrate. Before we go, I have to ask you, can you please do an impersonation for us? I'll do my character, Habib. It's Habib, I swear to God. And like, I swear, like, I heard this accent at Bankstown train station growing up when I was going to uni, and I saw two like, Lebanese, there were three of them actually sitting there, and I was sitting like, directly opposite. And one of them like, was telling a story to the other two, right? And his other mate was involved in the story, but this guy wasn't. So he was going like, I swear to God, like, you know, and I'm sitting there watching, listening, just loving it. He's like, I swear to God, like, we did this, we like, did that. Ask him, ask him. Like, then we did this, I swear to God, and then like, we did the burnout. Ask him, ask him. Oh, I swear to like, God, we did this. Like, if you don't believe me, ask him. And I'm dying. Like, I am dying. It's, he kept saying it, and then he'd go, ask him. Like, if you don't believe it, the story. And I took that accent, like, and, and I said, okay. So I'm back to myself. And then I said, funny, like, I've got to do the accent. And the guy announcing trains at that stage had the same accent. So I made fun of that. And so I swear to God, like, then I got this character, Habib. I auditioned for Fat Pizza. The guy saw me. He goes, yep. You were a drug dealer. That's what he pigeoned me whole as. So I was a drug dealer. Next, I turned up the set. I was giving yellow yellow tracksuit, and then I played like the character of Habib on Fat Pizza, House O's, and Swift and Shift Couriers. Three different sitcoms. Exactly the same character. <laughs> <laughs> I went to acting school. What a waste! Like, <laughs> who goes like from one sitcom to anyway? Um, so that's why I've I've got a lot more than that. And I'm doing a so, yeah, on more God.